Good morning from Ipoh. We are in the fourth largest city in Malaysia. Now, despite that, this city is still considered to be one of the most underrated cities in all of Asia. And that's because a lot of people consider it to be Georgetown's little brother, or it's only a stopping point to go over to the Cameron Highlands. But Malaysians know Ipo is home to some of the best traditional food in the country. So that's what we're here to do today. We're going to check out traditional Ipo food. We're going to look at the street art, pop into some of the markets and shops. And if the weather holds up, we're also going to check out a temple. Breakfast, the most important meal of the day, we're at Sin Yun Long for a very important reason, for its coffee. Now, Ipo is known for its white coffee and a lot of people think it's just good coffee with milk in it. That's not true at all. It's actually because the coffee beans are roasted in palm oil margarine. Very unique, I think it's only done here and it's made Ipo famous. We got two different kinds. One cold for Alan, and then I got the original hot version. We also have two other traditional things, roti bakar with kaya. Now kaya is also known as soursop in many countries, and it comes with just, it's just toast. It's just a classic toast with soursop jam, but also then something very decadent, not usually for breakfast. They call this a creme caramel, you might call it flan. I know it as dessert. This is going to be a very sweet kind of breakfast. And I can't wait to try this coffee. Mmm. Oh, this was a good choice. So, it does have a, a buttery flavor, but they also add condensed milk to it. So, as I said, it's sweet creme caramel. It's the sweet kaya soursop toast, and then also the sweet coffee. Mmm, not sweet. It's like a flan, but the syrup with it is actually not too sweet at, sweet at all. And then roti bakar, you're gonna find all over Malaysia. This is just a very classic dish. You can get it with kaya, the sour sop jam, or the sweet sop jam. You can also get it, which I like better, where it's an egg and a little cheese in the middle. So it's almost like a French toast with cheese. Mmm, they've got butter in here too. So it's butter and jam. That's a perfect combination because it's a little bit creamy, a little bit salty, and then you get that sweetness from the jam. Mmm. Now I had heard that Ipoh was a very walkable city, and that is true. Despite being the fourth largest city in Malaysia, the old town part of it is actually like a town. And so everything is, I would say, within definitely half an hour. But I think that 15 minute walk is our longest walk today. Everything we want to see is closed, including our next stop to see some street art. One of the other things I wanted to point out is we are in Chinatown and I've noticed uh, several signs here that say Muslim friendly. And the reason that they do that is that Chinese love pork, like much of the rest of the world. Muslims do not. And so here, at least they're telling you, if you say you're Muslim, they know which dishes you can and you can't eat. at the concubine lane which I think is fascinating now mining is really big in this area years ago there was a mining tycoon who owned three streets he gave one to his wife and two others to his second and third wife or concubines now this is the first concubine street and historically it's where there was gambling smoking other millionaires would house their concubines here this is where all the debauchery was and then you had the wife lane a little bit more respectable and then the second concubine lane we're going to check this one out first because even today this is where it's at it's a very popular tourist street but as i said we're here on a monday so fingers crossed it's not too busy was a bit surprising. I thought it would be more of a tourist, traditional kind of Ipo art, crafts, those kinds of things, but it's actually a very modern kind of like shopping lane for locals to buy hair clips and TikTok type foods and things like that. There was nothing really on the lane that I was interested in, although 
It was good to kind of walk down to see a historic lane from 1901. And also, there is a spot here I thought about checking out as our second breakfast today. So we are at Laksa Mana. To find the restaurants here, they're actually behind the shops and so they're tucked away. In Malaysia, uh, there are different kinds of laksas. There's no one laksa recipe. Right, first time trying Ipo laksa. Now looking at this laksa, I can see already it's a little bit different than what we had in Penang. And that's because the broth looks much, much lighter. Now laksa is typically a rice vermicelli noodle, although sometimes it's also wheat. And then you get lots of different condiments, vegetables, a little bit of spice. This one has the castori lime, and then of course those hard boiled eggs. Mmm. Mmm. Okay, you definitely get it is a fish broth. Just a little bit of spice. You can see the broth is lighter, but also it tastes much lighter. The spice is a lot lighter, and we don't have any sambal. Mmm. Mmm. This is good. This is fantastic. You know what? Having a nice light one is perfect for a hot day. We just wanted a little bit of a snack to share, and so that's exactly what we're gonna have. We're gonna split this and some ice cream out. Alan just brought up a really good point that the broth is light, but it has all of this like crumbled spice throughout, and you can see it on the spoon. That is where the spiciness comes from, not the actual broth. So if you wanted no spice, you could do it. They would just leave it out. Or if you wanted more spice, they would put it on. It's almost like a dry sambal that they put on. Right, we're going to now check out uh, some street art, which I think is at the end. It's one o'clock and this place has gotten much busier. Now, there is a map of all the street art, many maps to tell you where to get them. We've decided to make things difficult and just walk around in the hot sun, but there's a lot. So I think we'll be able to find them. And I think we just found one right here. So this is, I think, one of the originals because you can see right over there, it says Zach. That's the Lithuanian artist that made the murals here and in Penang in 2014. You have to look really hard, but you can see it is a local life kind of big piece of artwork, but with sun, rain, just the elements, it's fading. As you guys know, I'm a huge fan of walkable cities and Ipo is one of them for sure. You can just walk around, look at the architecture. There's lots of cute shops, great food, great coffee shops. Like there's an art walk here. Next up, we're gonna hit some more food. It's a 15 minute walk away and hopefully I won't melt in the sun. So we actually made it to Concumai 3 lane, and this is actually my favorite. It's the nicest one. There's much more space, fewer vendors. There's some shops. You can see the street art. This one feels like a nice, breezy, easy time. Much better than the first one. And then you can also see, this is where you can start to see the traditional life here. been talking about the differences between Ipo and Penang. And so I would say here, it feels like when you go to the historic area of Penang, nobody really lives there. I mean, that is for tourism. It's so popular, UNESCO heritage site, so it's probably very expensive. And so the island in Penang is very large. We drove around almost the whole thing and we saw there's lots of housing. But Georgetown, the UNESCO heritage part, I think is mostly just tourism. That's where the money is. Walking around Ipoh, 
You still look at that great architecture, but you feel like people actually live here. It's definitely quieter because it doesn't have UNESCO heritage status, but I really like it. I feel like it's a city that likes good food, likes street art, likes architecture. It's very livable. I don't plan on retiring in Canada, so I'm always on the hunt for like, what are cities where I feel like I could live? Ipoh doesn't have a beach though, so I love it, but I could not live here. to eat one food in Ipo, this should be it. It's a bean sprouts, chicken rice, or for fun. We are at probably one of the most famous places in Ipo. And the funny thing is, is it's so organized. It's not funny, but it's very surprising because usually popular places, they're just so popular that it's insanity. As soon as you get down, someone comes over and gives you your choice of drink. You can either get this plum drink or a Chinese herbal tea. They bring over the menu and you order. So we have one portion of chicken and one portion of bean sprouts. The chicken is the most special thing. It's different than a lot of other chicken. Now, it's similar to Hyannese chicken. It's poached and then immediately put into a cold bath and that retains all the juices. And then on top, I think what we have is a little bit of sesame oil, soy sauce, and maybe a little bit of black pepper, but I also see green onions. And then the bean sprouts are just quickly blanched and then also put in a sesame soy kind of sauce. Although in both, I tasted, there's something there sweet too. There's definitely some white pepper, but then there's, I don't know, a sweetness that I can't quite peg. It could be as simple as palm. Let's try this drink. It's just a Chinese plum drink. I've never tasted anything like this before. It's sweet, it's tart, but also salty. It almost tastes like when you were young, maybe you played soccer and they gave you those salted orange juice. Now, I'm not entirely sure how we're supposed to eat this. You should actually watch. They tell, ask you if you want chicken or rice as well. I'm gonna take some of these bean sprouts, put it into my dish. I'm watching other people. I don't know if I'm doing this right. I think the key, from what I see, you put your spoon close to your mouth. Mmm. Oh, it's moist. It's really, really good. It's nice because it's so different than not the other foods you get, like the curries, the laksas, all of those kinds of very heavy, bold dishes. Mmm. is incredible the amount of food the customers that come in and out they're just turning the tables chili sauce is self-service if you eat outside I actually really enjoyed eating inside because it's so hot out today we got a local tip that there is like a flea market back in Chinatown I think that is supposed to be great but also there's a coffee shop there that is supposed to be very cool so we're gonna head over there Just a short check-in on this one because we came to this flea market. Well, not really much of a flea market at all, mostly just small stores. And we decided to check out Plan B Coffee, which is actually a full-on restaurant and bar. So it's a Malaysian brand. Alan decided even though we just ate chicken, he wanted to try the peri-peri chicken. And then we also got some coffee, which was the reason we came. We are gonna be eating again later, so I'm not gonna share a lot here, but we're going somewhere and I hope it doesn't rain because it is supposed to be fantastic, but most of the seating is outside and we're going to have octopus and this thing called midnight noodles. I think it's gonna be the perfect way to end the day, but till then we're gonna hang out here because this guy's still hungry. See you then. evening at seven o'clock we are refreshed and actually hungry again unbelievably and so we're gonna head to a spot seven minutes away it's very well known for baby octopus in soy sauce and then also these midnight noodles that seem so good I really hope that we can actually get a seat because I've heard this place is popular anyway on to dinner
Okay. I want big or small? A uh, small. Small. And the midnight noodle. Midnight noodle. Noodle all year. Which With the noodle? egg on top? Yeah, the got the moon egg. I think that's the one. Yes. Famous. Yes. Famous one. Yes, one. This one is up one. Yes, one of those. Yeah. Uh, small. 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 The egg is fresh. Eh? Yes. Come, you mix. Amazing, I can't wait. Sometimes I feel like nothing goes my way and then other times everything does. Today the weather really hung on for us because we only had one day in the Ipo. And then also this restaurant, I knew it had opened in 1963 and it had other outlets. Thankfully I remembered there was one next door. So we couldn't find it originally with Google Maps because it was dark, but we walked in here and I was hoping it would have the same food and yes, it does. The weather has held up, we were eating inside. We're gonna have two dishes, one, it's baby octopus and soy, very famous. And then the other one is called Yu Kong Ho, or Midnight Noodles. And that's because it is a raw egg yolk on rice noodles. And it resembles the moon against the dark night. And you mix it all together, it will be creamy, silky. I've heard it's fantastic. People here are so nice, actually. Just very friendly and so helpful. And I'm just so excited to be eating outside and eating this food. I would have been really disappointed if I had missed it because I've been waiting for this dish all day. So this spot is known for a lot of different food. But this is one of the dishes that people really rave about. So it's baby octopus and it's in just a simple soy sauce. I don't know if it has anything else in it. It comes out warm. I was actually expecting it to be cold for some reason. I guess like a cold salad. Mmm. Okay, it's not just soy sauce. What is in this sauce? It's soy and? The ketchup and the minyak oil. Ah, ketchup. Okay, it's soy ketchup, which would give it a bit of umami and oil. Mmm. This is not too spicy either. I find in Malaysia nothing is too spicy. You can really get caught in Thailand, in Indonesia by having food that is way too hot and you pay for it. But I don't think I've had anything yet in Malaysia that has been too hot. It might be the places that we go, but also Alan thinks that Malaysians don't like hot sauce as much. This is a huge portion of noodles. So actually, it's not just noodles, it's noodles, we got chicken, you can also get beef and then also I can see some okra in them and maybe some other vegetables but it's in a dark soy dressing or sauce and so what it is, is it's a fresh duck egg that they put on raw this is why it looks like the moon at night and we're just gonna break this all up okay. and get this ooey gooey <laughs> unctuousness in to these noodles. I am so excited to eat this. Now this is a small. They asked us if they wanted more. I think uh, larger must be like family size. And Alan has said, well, it's a kwetiao noodle, which is a rice noodle and it's a thick noodle. And then you can order chicken or pork in it. We got the chicken. And also there's some vegetables in it and then that fresh egg on top. They tell you that it's a fresh egg. Mmm, very rich, deep flavor. This sauce is so sticky. I know it'd be fantastic with pork, but I'll tell you right now, I don't miss it at all. The actual sauce is just super, super tasty. Mmm, what a way to end the day in Ipo. In the next video, you're gonna catch us in a new country, one that we've been to before, and one that Alan knows very well. See you in Indonesia. Join my Patreon community for more behind the scenes and exclusive content you won't find elsewhere. You can also find me on Instagram and be sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel. All of these things make my day. Thank you so much for your support.